Good morning and welcome to Landward. And today we're in Drinnes Wood, just north of Mintlock. And somewhere in here, there's an old Victorian observatory that's frankly proving a little bit elusive. But I've been given one of these to help me, and more on that later. But stick with us, because we're going to give it away before the end of the programme. But coming up on Landward. Why volcanoes are helping to grow crops in Perthshire. Farming with help from above, if you can receive it right. And Nancy starts a three-week challenge to get a family to eat fresh Scottish produce. OK, here's the tease. What has this got to do with this? To produce giant vegetables like this. You have to put rock dust on your garden or on your field. By not only replacing the calcium, the lime in the soil, the most abundant mineral, you replace all the minerals and trace minerals. In a bleak glen in Perthshire, a garden of Eden has been created where crops flourish and vegetables reach generous proportions. It's all in the fertiliser, volcanic rock dust. Well, look at this carrot. This was harvested seven months ago. It's not bendy. When I buy organic carrots in the shops, they're bendy within days. Look at my potato. I've not grown tatties here for 50 years. Look what we can grow in our compost and rock dust mix. This could feed the world. This stuff. This basalt rock dust is a secret. It has 75 plus minerals and trace minerals. We've found over the last 25 years, when we use it as a fertiliser, it has brilliant shelf life, crops last right through the winter, disease pest resistance is brilliant. You apply it every five years or every ten years. It's as simple as that. And this is the Thompson's idea of fertiliser heaven. Rock dust is a by-product of quarrying and this quarry is supplying the Thompsons for free. After all, it could lead to commercial demand. This is volcanic basalt. This is the material that we uh, are producing as a by-product in uh, crushing aggregates. We're producing up to 150 tonnes of this rock dust a day. Now we are using uh, a percentage of that in quarry materials, but we just can't get rid of it all. We're stockpiling this material in the quarry and there's vast amounts of this right throughout Scotland. Our soils are ancient, laid down around 10,000 years ago after the last ice age. The Thompsons argue that overuse of chemicals has caused serious damage and essential minerals have been leached from the soil. The reason farmers apply chemical fertilizers to the land is because the minerals and the trace minerals are gone from the soil. That's why people give their animals mineral licks, that's why people take mineral supplements, because the minerals are gone. Oh hi, we've been cranks for a long time, but uh, now we've got what we campaigned for, having the research underway, uh, it makes everybody take it a lot more seriously. Yes, after 18 years of battling to prove their theory that it can replace chemicals as an effective organic fertiliser, the research is now official. The Thompsons have won financial backing from the Scottish Executive to carry out the first ever UK field trials of rock dust. We've got grass on ordinary soil, grass with soil plus manure, soil plus compost, soil plus NPK fertiliser. And then each of those conditions with rock dust to see what the rock dust is actually doing to the grass and to the soil. Why is it so important to look at fertilisers like rock dust? I think it's very clear that soils are such a fundamental resource for civilization, and that we have to be very careful how we manage them. We've done uh, a lot of damage sometimes in the kinds of chemicals we've used in our soils. Um, and we need to try to find alternative soil fertility systems. And we need to get the minerals back in the soils because the soils are so ancient that many of the minerals have been leached out and they're not in our food chain. At the SEER Centre, that's Sustainable Ecological Earth Regeneration, their research focuses on creating soil and putting the minerals back into what we've already got. 
we have three key areas of interest here. One is um, avoiding the, the, the disposal into landfill of organic waste by creating composts. If we use the rock dust for the compost, we have a value-added material because it becomes more of a fertilizer. The second interest is if we put minerals into the soils, do we create carbon sinks and help strip out some of the carbon from the atmosphere to offset global climate change? And the third key interest is if we put the minerals back in the soil, will we help replace the minerals in the food chain which keep us healthy? We cannot be healthy without the zinc, the selenium, uh, the magnesium because these are critical to a healthy, a healthy person. And the word is spreading because these young leeks, which are just about to be planted out, are to take part in a unique experiment. Because this organic farm has been given special permission by the Soil Association to use rock dust as fertiliser. Well, I was at a meeting in Perth and I saw some of the results that the Thompsons had achieved. And uh, they were really quite outstanding, so I'm always looking for ways to increase yields. Although, on the other hand, I'll be disappointed if it makes a massive difference because being an organic farmer, we would hope to have looked after the trace elements, but certainly it will suit a lot of farms, I'm quite convinced of that. And it's not just in Scotland that they're starting to take rock dust seriously. Apart from the United States Department of Agriculture, the Waste Strategy Advisor for England and Wales has been here, composting waste management scientists from China, Africa, they've been here and they all go away totally turned on to rock dust. How firmly do you believe in rock dust? Dedicated my wife to it. <laughs> we even drink the stuff. 